Ever wondered why James Bond has been a Hollywood obsession for over 60 years? Today we're going to explore the character's evolution, from the suave beginning set by Sean Connery to the comedic twist introduced by Roger Moore and the complete reinvention by Daniel Craig. Buckle up, because the debate over the best Bond is about to get stirred, not shaken. James Bond, created by Ian Fleming, has been a Hollywood sensation for over six decades. The role has been a coveted gem, and six actors have stepped into the shoes of the suave spy. Sean Connery, the original, set the standard with his sophisticated style. Roger Moore added a comedic flair. Pierce Brosnan brought sex appeal and wit. Daniel Craig reinvented the character, while George Lazenby and Timothy Dalton retrospectively earned their due praise. Each Bond brought a unique flavor, but the question remains, who really is the best James Bond? The undisputed fact is that every Bond actor ventured into uncharted territories, making the character their own. It's a point often overlooked, but crucial to the ongoing debate over who deserves the title of the best James Bond. While the discussions continue, one thing is certain. The best Bonds strike the perfect balance of allure, sophistication and grit, and some may even say sex appeal. Each of them embody the essence of a spy with a license to kill, leaving an indelible mark on the franchise. Join us as we unravel the moments and style that will determine the best James Bond actor. Number 6. George Lazenby, Breaking the Mold Let's discuss George Lazenby, the man who dared to break the established Bond mold and became the only actor to ever make one Bond film. While many critics relegate him to the bottom of the list, his portrayal in On Her Majesty's Secret Service offers a unique perspective. He brought a charm to the role that earned him praise behind the scenes, so much so that they offered him seven more Bond movies, but he didn't want that. Beyond the film itself, Lazenby's off-screen journey and the circumstances surrounding his departure from the film franchise added a layer of intrigue to the legacy of this underrated Bond. Producer Albert Broccoli spoke on the Australian actor in a Los Angeles Times interview, revealing it was the biggest mistake in 16 years. He just couldn't deal with success. He was so arrogant. There was the stature and looks of a Bond, but Lazenby couldn't get along with the other performers and technicians. Lazenby wasn't interested in being stuck as 007 either. No, he had his eyes set on being the next Clint Eastwood, taking a page from the rebellious spirit of the times. In a 2017 interview with The Guardian, Lazenby shared, I had advice that James Bond was over anyway. It was Sean Connery's gig, and in the 60s, it was all about love, not war. You know, hippie time, and I bought into that. Lazenby wanted what Clint Eastwood had. Clint was the king of the Western movies. And Lazenby thought, why not me? He didn't feel like he was losing a million dollars by walking away from Bond. He felt like he was gaining a whole new adventure. So, there you have it, folks. Lazenby's bold move inspired by the 60s counterculture and the lure of the Italian Western scene. Who says no to a chance at being the next Clint Eastwood, right? Fun fact number one, Lazenby gets the call for the Bond audition. What does he do? Well, he goes all in. He drops his hard-earned savings on a slick Rolex watch and a Savile Row suit. Fun fact, that suit was originally tailored for Sean Connery, but never picked up. Number 5. Roger Moore. The evolution of style. Roger Moore, the man of charm and sophistication, graced the Bond screen for an impressive 12-year stint. His debut in Live and Let Die marked a departure from Connery's suaveness and introduced a Bond with comedic edge. The Spy Who Loved Me is one of those films that has cemented itself in Bond folklore. What sets this film apart is the razor-sharp wit and cunning self-awareness. You have a stolen nuclear warhead plot, but with a constant underscore of fun and excitement. The absurdity injected into the mix worked wonders here, adding a flair of ridiculousness that sets the spy who loved me apart from the rest. The movie unfolds predominantly in the bustling landscapes of New York City and the vibrant city of New Orleans as Bond dives into an investigation surrounding the mysterious deaths of British agents, the trail leads him to the intriguing and perilous Caribbean island of San Monique. 
Get ready for a Bond adventure that breaks new ground and sets the stage for the captivating era of Roger Moore as the iconic MI6 agent. However, Roger Moore's entry into the Bond universe wasn't just sensational. It marked a defining moment, proving that the Bond franchise could flourish post-Connery. Live and Let Die not only introduced Moore as 007, but also paved the way for a new era of Bond brilliance. Fun fact. Number two. Moore and his agent opted for a unique approach, taking on each Bond movie, one film at a time, rather than committing to a multi-picture deal. Talk about playing it cool. Number four, Timothy Dalton, the bold visionary. Timothy Dalton often overlooked, but a bold visionary in the Bond universe. His brief tenure in the late 80s was a departure from the flamboyance of the era, presenting a more realistic and nuanced portrayal of 007. Dalton's two Bond films were The Living Daylights and Licence to Kill. These movies not only showcased Dalton's acting prowess, but also marked a departure from the formulaic plots of the time. Unfortunately for Dalton, Licence to Kill didn't do well at box office probably due to the poor timing of the film's release. Unfortunately, the third movie he was supposed to star in ran into some trouble. It would be six years before there would be another Bond film. Dalton's contract ended and he didn't want to renew it. The contract obligation was too much as he didn't think he could commit to future Bond movies. Fun Fact 3 during a September 1988 interview while filming, Timothy Dalton refuted media assertions that his Bond character was restricted in intimate scenes due to the prevalent AIDS epidemic. Yet in a candid 2007 interview, he conceded the accuracy of those claims. Number three, Pierce Brosnan, the resilient Bond. Pierce Brosnan, a Bond who weathered the storm of increasingly outlandish plots, deserves to be in our top three. GoldenEye, his debut Bond film, reinvigorated the franchise after a hiatus, blending action and espionage with a touch of 90s flair. However, as the Brosnan era progressed, the films ventured into more fantastical territories, culminating in the infamous Die Another Day. Yet Brosnan's commitment to the role remained unwavering and his charisma consistently shone through, especially in Goldeneye. Kicking off in 1986 behind the Iron Curtain, Goldeneye then leaps to modern challenges besieging Bond, politics, sexual conduct and loyalty all face scrutiny. Former KGB peers turned wealthy gangsters embrace questionable American culture. Natalia Isabella Skorupko, the woman who captivates Bond, is a computer hacker with expertise beyond his grasp. The antagonist is his old friend and MI6 doppelganger, thriving in a rule-free world. Brosnan shines in this role, exuding suave sophistication and urbanity surpassing other Row 07 actors. His unflinching coolness contrasts with the shifting world. Despite this, he doesn't brood. Instead, he forges ahead with a stiff upper lip and a Connery-like coldness mixed with Moore's whimsy. Director Martin Campbell matches this with an initially bleak tone set in Russia, evolving as Bond proves his mettle and concludes the tale in the sunny Caribbean. It boasts two of the franchise's best villains, Sean Bean as Zero Row Six and Famke Janssen as Xenia Onatop, delivering the most memorable assassination since Sir Giles and Odd Job. At a string of action sequences, including a tank chase through St. Petersburg, and you get one of the 90s finest action movies. It's Bonding at its god tier. Number two, Daniel Craig, The Bond Revolution. Daniel Craig, the gritty and raw Bond who brought a radical revolution to the franchise. Craig's groundbreaking tenure would not have happened without the success of Casino Royale and Skyfall. These cinematic gems not only redefined Bond for a new generation, but also elevated the franchise to unprecedented heights. Craig's portrayal from the physicality of his action sequences to the emotional depth he brought to the character earned him praise and put these movies on the map. Notably, Skyfall is one of his best, with a killer theme song that won Adele and Oscar to the storyline and the cast. It is no wonder why this film is in one of the better Bond movies. 
What sets Skyfall apart is its standalone brilliance as a riveting action movie and a surprisingly nuanced character drama. Bardem crafts one of the most formidable Bond villains, a madman truly on par with Bond himself. Director Sam Mendes's ingenious decision to center the plot around Dench, making her the film's primary Bond girl, adds a subversive touch without overtly announcing its innovation. Skyfall broke box office records, grossing over $1 billion, a historic feat for the Bond franchise. As EW's critic reflects, the film achieves a rare balance, seamlessly weaving themes of loss, mortality and future shock anxiety while presenting one of the most intricately unhinged villains in Bond history. Skyfall isn't just a Bond film, it's a cinematic masterpiece that resonates emotionally and thrills viscerally, making it an indispensable chapter in the 007 legacy. And now it's time for the very best. Number 1. Sean Connery, The Architect of Bond now, the man who started it all, Sean Connery, the architect of Bond. From his debut in Doctor No in 1962 to his triumphant return in Diamonds Are Forever in 1971, Connery set the gold standard for what 007 should be. Beyond the suave demeanor and iconic one-liners, Connery's contribution to the action spy thriller genre in more ways than one. There would be no 007 without Sean Connery. His timeless charisma made him a true icon of cinema, shaping the very essence of James Bond. Connery's portrayal ensured that Bond was not only a cinematic hero but also an enduring symbol of entertainment. Widely hailed as the quintessential James Bond film, Goldfinger stands as the cinematic blueprint where much of the Bond movie essence either debuted or solidified as a crucial hallmark. This iconic masterpiece injected the Bond formula with an extra dose of style and fun, imprinting itself in the franchise's core. From its sharp wit and memorable one-liners to the fascination surrounding its cutting-edge gadgetry and a more pronounced sense of humour, Goldfinger elevated the Bond experience. There you have it, an extended edition that takes you deeper into the heart and soul of our iconic Bonds. Which era resonates with you the most? Share your thoughts in the comments, and if you've enjoyed this extended journey, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe for more Bond content, and stay tuned for our next deep dive into the world of espionage. Until then, may your martinis be shaken, not stirred.